G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Let's do an interesting grade 12 counting problem, which goes as follows. A parking lot has 16 spaces in a row. 12 cars arrive, each of which requires one parking space, and the drivers choose their spaces at random among the available spaces. Okay. Auntie M then arrives in her SUV, which requires two adjacent spaces. What is the probability that she will be able to park? All right, all right. So obviously I want to draw a picture for this, strategy number four, draw a picture. We've got 16 parking spots. Uh, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh oh, 14, 15, 16. That probably just failed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and next one. Oops. Okay. So 16 spots in a row. 12 cars come in and occupy the spots, so say occupied and occupied and occupied and occupied, that's four. Occupied and occupied and occupied and occupied, that's another four. Uh, occupied and occupied, occupied and occupied, that's another four. Leaving four vacant spots for Auntie M's. Right now it's vacant, 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 vacant. She requires in her SUV two adjacent vacant spots, and right now if she came into the saw this, she'll be stuck. So the question is, what's the probability when 12 spots are taken up by cars, there will be two vacant spots next to each other. All right, all right. So this feels like a counting problem, because basically, any arrangement of occupied spaces and vacant spaces is a word that's 16 letters long, and there's going to be, what, 12 O's and 4 V's. And some of these words are bad, like this one, that's bad for Auntie M, and some will be good, like if I had V, V here, and that was occupied or something, that would be good for Auntie M. So what I need to do is basically count how many good words there are for Auntie M, and divide by the total number of words. And counting the total number of words is doable. I mean, I've studied my permutations and combinations. The total number of possible configurations of 12 O's and 4 V's would be, what, 16 letters divided by 12 factorial and 4 factorial, whoops, 4 factorial, 12 for the O's, 4 for the V's, and I can actually work out that number. I'll worry about that detail later on. So now the question is, as the total number of configurations Auntie M could see, we now want to count the number of good configurations for her. There's how many of these words have two or more V's next to each other? Counting that feels scary, actually. Um, we have to count all the ones with two Vs here and do the rest of the words, and then two Vs here and do the rest of the words. Or maybe it could be three Vs in a row, count all configurations. That seems hard. But, but, in doing probability, it's become a very classic technique. You sort of count the opposite of what you want and then subtract it away later on. So maybe we should count how many arrangements of these words are bad for Auntie M that have Vs separated by Os. That is, I can imagine there's going to be four Vs somewhere and all you do now is count how many ways can I put O's in the spaces between the V's. Is that doable? Does that feel possible? Actually, that feels hard, because I don't know, there's going to be at least one O. We need at least one O here. It could be, I don't know, seven O's for all I know. At least one O in here, at least one O in here, and maybe some O's at the ends. That seems hard to count. So there's another way I could count bad configurations of M's, what I'm wondering now. Um, hmm. So what's bad for Auntie M? Well, bad, it's bad for Auntie M whenever there's a V that's sandwiched between two O's. So maybe I can count how many ways can I have V's sandwiched between two O's. Oh, maybe that's not quite right, because what if a V was at an end? This V is actually sandwiched between an O and a sort of a void spot. Hmm. Nonetheless, there'll be 12 O's. Squeaking away, I am. And... There are possible places to insert these V's. And don't forget the left and right ends. Oh. How many ways can I insert V's in that diagram? I just have an epiphany in my mind. I bet I can count that fairly quickly. So, it's one of those moments when you see what to do, it's fabulous. When you don't see what to do, it's just a nightmare. So you have to wait for that epiphany to come for yourself. Can you count how many ways to put four V's amongst these O's? because they all count exactly what we don't want, which is kind of the reverse of what we're doing, which will then tell me how many, how many ways we can do what I do want, and then we can work out the probability for Auntie M. All right, have an epiphany. Wait for it to come. It could take minutes, it could take hours. Maybe you just need to put this aside for a few days and just you know, not think about the problem. It will come to you. I bet you an epiphany will come to you. And when you're ready, have a look at the essay that goes with this video. We can compare our answers. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.